All right, so I'm going to be showing you right now about surfaces. Uh, surfaces are very different than just plugging in a projector to your computer and then outputting it. Um, that's how it used to be years ago, and that's how your computer still is. When you plug in a projector or an LED screen to your computer, you go into System Preferences, and you go into, uh, I believe it's Screens, and it'll show you what screens or video outs you have connected the little, to the windows, and you move them around, all that kind of stuff. Um, that is great when you're always going to project full screen, and that's it. Uh, surfaces on QLab are very different. Surfaces allows me to put multiple screens on top of each other in layers, one to the left, one to the right, one to the top. It allows me to do corner pinning, uh, video mapping, projection mapping, uh, or pixel mapping, however you want to say it. It allows me to add masks, and it allows me to work completely offline as well. I don't need to actually have my... Um, my screens plugged in to know what they are. If I know that I have a VGA projector, <laughs> hate VGA, uh, but if I have a VGA projector, I know my dimensions are 800 by 600 because that's what the size of that projector is. If I know that I'm gonna be working with a LED screen and it's full HD, and then of course that's 1920 by 1080, so I can put those actual values into an empty blank surface and I can do all of my programming prior to me even arriving at my venue. Um, of course, the fastest way to do it is to plug in the screen to your computer. Your computer will tell you the dimensions and you simply add that surface and you're done. Um, but I wanna show you how you have full control. So let's go ahead over here and open up QLab. We're gonna to go to our software uh, settings, sorry, our settings. Um, we're gonna get rid of all of these uh, previous surfaces that I had in here and uh, we're gonna create a new uh, surface with the display. Now I have nothing connected to my computer at this moment so there would normally be uh, right in this window here there would normally be um, a projector or a TV set or a LED wall whatever I plugged in it would see it at that moment in time. Since I have nothing plugged in there's not going to be anything there. If you want to create a surface that is not currently connected that you that you don't know the details about uh, you could go into here to new empty surface. In this case, I'm going to use my computer screen itself uh, as my demonstration monitor. So we're going to go here to color LCD, which is my Mac screen, and I can prove that to you by clicking the little grid button or the guides button, and you can see it takes over my screen and shows me QLab on my actual computer screen. So we're going to label this Mac screen. Okay, now that is my surface. If I go into um, any of the files that I've just added here, I can choose the surface for my little backdrop here under this Mac screen, okay? Now, if I play that, you can see it instantly comes up on my entire screen because my screen is now the demonstration purpose. Now, I never use the Mac screen for anything in my shows. In fact, when you open up QLab, it's automatically gonna be in there in your surfaces because it is a connected surface to your computer. I immediately delete that because I never wanna make a mistake and send a graphic or a video or um, a text or anything I'm gonna project in the show onto my computer screen because that's just completely pointless. However, if you're wondering why it's there, because there's a lot of uses for it. When I do trade shows, when I use my computers in the lobby, uh, I have an iMac, an old white iMac computer that um, I set up on my souvenir stand. And it runs commercials about the products, it runs uh, uh, videos before the show starts, and I use QLab to control that. So QLab is actually sending the projections to the back of the video backdrop, and then it's also playing a video on the screen of QLab itself. Um, so I do use the screen for those purposes, but I never use it when I'm running a, a show or a presentation where the computer is backstage and that's simply to be uh, my, my operating console, my show control system. Uh, so I delete that surface out of there immediately. Um, let's go over here to this other one. Uh, I'm gonna give my good friend Leon Ntn a shout out here because I uh, was just doing some stuff with him for his show Magic Rocks that was at Foxwoods recently. And uh, he sent me this graphic and so I thought, why not? I'll give him a shout out and use his graphic in this. And if you haven't seen Leon NTN's Magic Rock show, check it out. It's really good. Um, all right, so if I go and I add that to my Mac screen, if I fire that, once again, uh, it comes up on that screen. Now, here's the cool thing. Let's go into 
um, settings and we're going to add a new second screen or surface rather and we're going to add this as second screen. Now this is what you would do if you had two individual side screens on the side of your show. Um, you could have one screen here and one screen here. Now, 99% of the time, this is how I run my system. I have one surface right here, the Mac screen, which is my center projector, the video wall behind me. Now the two side screens on the outside of my stage are on one surface. I want to duplicate them because I don't want to waste time having to copy everything on that screen to show up on that screen. So all I do is I send out two video outs. The first video goes to the, ma the main screen. Uh, just to clarify this, let's label this main screen, that we don't get confused. That's the main center screen. And this is going to be the second screen. So to clarify that, we're going to even go a little bit further here. Um, we're going to do this side screens. And this will make more sense of how I'm actually doing my show at this exact moment. Center main screen. Okay, cool. So this surface right here is going to be my center main screen of my show, which is the big video wall or video projector. In this case, it's a video projector here. Um, this is going to be my side screens. To do that, I would do two video outs. The one video out would go to the um, converter that ha handles the main screen. The second video out is going to handle um, the left screen. And then I'm just going to daisy chain that to the next one. That's all I'm going to do. So the computer sees one video out, and that's how it goes. If you don't want to daisy chain it from your projector all the way to that side, that can be kind of stupid if you have a, a large stage and now you have to run twice as much video. Um, you can get for like $12 on Amazon. I have a link for it on my page as well. Um, it's just a, a, a HDMI splitter, and it splits equally. So in other words, it doesn't lose the quality and, and divide the... Uh, the, the, the quality of the HD signal. It it's, uh, actually sends both signals duplicate to each screen identically. It mirrors both images to both of those screens, okay? Or th that image to both of those screens. So uh, I'm gonna show you right now how this works. So now we're gonna open audition window. And we are gonna fire the first graphic, which is on my center main screen as it shows you right here in the bottom of that. And now we're going to fire Leon Etienne's screen, which shows you it's right next to it. So if I hit fit, it's going to show me both screens side by side. Uh, now, it doesn't give you an exact visual of your show because in your show, of course, you'd have one of those graphics on both sides of you. So in this case, it would be um, Magic Rocks on both sides with the QLab tutorial in the center. It doesn't see it that way. And I kind of wish that they would allow you to, but there's no way to to drag these individual surfaces around in the audition window. Um, and I would like to do that because it would get my brain a little bit easier when I'm doing multiple surfaces to see which way they're facing and all that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, if I'm going to do that, do it like I have in my studio where I have multiple screens and that gives me the exact creation of what my screen would look like on the stage. Like physical screens are plugged into my, to my system. Um, so that is, the, that is the screen. Now let's take it a bit further and say I want to add a screen an additional surface on the same projector. Now, why would I want to do this? Well, there is a lot of times when I use multiple screens on the same stage. Um, for example, majority of my show, I have a 20-foot uh, screen in the back of the stage, all the way upstage, all the way in the back. It's about four feet off the ground. It's on a bar system. That's my screen. But there's some close-up routines, or when I'm doing set changes, when I have the, the, the main theater movie screen come down from the ceiling. And that covers the entire stage. But think about this. If I was to project my projector onto that big screen, now that screen moves, I'm going to be oversizing drastically that back screen. Okay, So I'm going to make another surface, and I'm going to change the dimensions of that just for that back screen. So I'm just going to give you a little taste here of what projection mapping is because that's actually what we're doing. We're going to add a new surface on that same exact, we're going to hit duplicate on that same exact surface, the same exact projector, everything stays the same. However, this time, imagine this is the entire stage right here, okay? 
But my backdrop that I'm going to project on now isn't going to be the entire video all. I'm going to go over here to constraints. I'm going to bring that in to, I believe that it's around 300. It's pretty close to it. And then we're going to bring that side in exactly as well to that next one. There you go. And we're going to bring it up. And we're going to bring the top in. It's kind of like cropping, basically. You're cropping the image. However, you're not cutting it off because it's going to fit just perfectly. So my screen looks very similar to that in the back of my stage. Now, I don't want to project the entire thing and overshoot it. So this is back wall screen. Okay. And now we are going to change that and put him on the back wall. Sorry, Leon, you're moving to the back. We're going to copy this and put this on the side screen. So now, if we open Audition window, you can see I can fire one screen, a second screen, and then that's going to be the one in the middle. Now I have full control and there's only two projectors even though visually it looks like I've created three different screens completely. Um, this is the advantages of surfaces. Uh, there's also a million ways you can layer surfaces. Uh, for example, if you go in here and um, create multiple surfaces on the same projector in the same location, um, you could label this uh, let's do this. Let's, yeah, you can label this uh, back wall screen. We already have that. We're going to get rid of this one here. This is going to be the main center main screen. Okay. Uh, just to show you without audition window so we can see exactly what it looked like in real life. If I fire this cue first, there is my first graphic. If I fire the second cue, it now puts that one on top, which is exactly what it would do if you did it on stage. Um, so let's hit escape and let's show you how I can change the surface so that it always stays in the back or the front no matter how you want to choose to do it. Um, you can go in here to where it says uh, back wall screen and you can say the back wall screen is always going to be at the bottom right there. So no matter when you fire that it's going to be on the bottom. All right. So now it doesn't matter the order um, if I fire this first and I now fire the back wall image, you will not see it because it stayed in the back behind this surface. So the advantage of that is, uh, as you saw a glimpse of it as I was fading that out, uh, the advantage is you could actually set up a video to be on that back wall before your other video fades out. So it's already there for you. Um, there's, there's a million reasons why you would want to do this. Uh, in my uh, show, I do green screen uh, technology where the girls are in, in green screen. I can move them around. I need my full backdrop, which covers multiple surfaces, to be in the very bottom, the layer above the bottom, so that I can then bring the girls' green screen alpha channel videos on the top. And that will affect what layer those surfaces are labeled as. So um, once again, it's endless to the possibilities that you can come up with and how you want to use it. Um, we are getting obviously kind of advanced here, what I just showed you. I hope that didn't scare anybody off because you don't need to be this complicated to do very, very simple things. Uh, but I wanted to let you understand what surfaces are because the next video I'm going to show you about mapping and you need to understand what surfaces are to understand what mapping and masks are going to do. All right, take a break, come back and learn some more.